glorious lights from bright stars leading to unforgettable events containing extraordinary people. These are the kind of epiphanies we like. The obvious ones, the showy ones, the flashy ones, the ones that catch our attention. And certainly the revelation of Jesus to the wise men was an extraordinary event. They were overjoyed at what they saw. But it wasn't the star in the heavens they were looking for. It was the child lying in the manger for whom they brought their gifts. It was the simple baby in the stable, not the shiny thing in the sky they had come to worship. It's interesting, it seems to me that it's always tempting to look for the shiny thing, the next big thing, the next craze that can hold our attention. It's tempting, even as we read scripture, to always be expecting some event like this, something extraordinary that stands out like a bright star on a nice clear sky. Events like the transfiguration, the feeding of the multitudes, the walking on water, almost set us up to be disappointed by the often mundane and simple ways that the Lord reveals himself to us. You know, we can think about the fact that every single day in the life of Jesus is not recounted for us in Scripture. We don't have every detail of what it was like to share a meal with him when he wasn't preaching or healing someone when no one else was around. We don't get the daily and complete descriptions of what he did when he wasn't doing something incredible. And yet, he was no less the Son of God, no less the Savior of the world in those moments, those unrecorded moments. Whether he was taking a stroll with a friend or raising a man from the dead, Jesus was still the Savior of the world. It's in the regularity of life that Christ wants to reveal himself, not just in big moments. It's not just with big crowds, with glorious liturgies and perfect homilies that he makes himself known. Jesus is always manifesting himself to us. God is always showing us something. But because we're often expecting something big, we don't see him in things that seem so small. Something like a baby lying in a feeding trough in a stable. It doesn't seem big enough for us. It seems too simple, too easily overlooked. We think surely God wouldn't be working in something as lowly as this. And St. Paul says as much in our second reading. He says, it was not made known to people in other generations as it has now been made known to us. And even as St. Paul is saying this, we could be saying the same thing. It was different for them. It was different. Jesus revealed himself to them in a different way. And God is showing himself to us in a way that is particular to us in a way that fits our circumstances, almost tailored to us. Because God knows the needs of, of our hearts and he knows just what we're looking for. And this is why waiting for the next grand epiphany of God can be a dangerous thing. It's dangerous because we can begin to ignore the small stuff because we're waiting for the big show. And so we ignore our children, or the phone call of a friend, or the challenges that we're facing at work, or our own health issues. We ignore them or dismiss them because we think they're useless. We think surely God won't show himself to me in this way. I'm gonna keep my eyes open for the big show the grand uh, display of fireworks, the one with all the lightning and peals of thunder. I want to wait for that show. That's how God makes himself known. And so we begin to ignore all the simple things in life. 
And little by little, life becomes boring. Because the majority of our lives is not full of big shows and big flashes of thunder and lightning. The majority of our lives are spent simply and quietly with a certain regularity and routine. And little by little, that boredom begins to set in. And it takes big shaking and shocking news to really uh, wake us up and to make us pay attention. This is why if you watch the news today, the, the bottom of every news line, it almost always says breaking news. Everything is breaking news. A new tweet is breaking news. Everything is breaking news because if it's not breaking news, they know that we're not going to pay attention. Because we have been lulled to sleep. The simple things in life are no longer interesting. And yet it's in the simple things in life that God makes himself known. This is how the Lord is revealing himself to us. How much we miss. How much we miss. Because we're only looking for the big things in life. Instead, it would be so much better to live in the way that Isaiah the prophet describes. Then you shall be radiant at what you, you see. Your heart shall throb and overflow. What beautiful language. Your heart shall throb and overflow. It will beat with a desire because it recognizes something that it's made for. It will beat again because the Lord is drawing near. Because in the simple things in life, we're able to recognize how God is making himself known. Not because of something wild and exotic, but because God is already pouring himself out in the simple and routine things of everyday life. But just because it's simple doesn't mean it's any less amazing or any less beautiful. The simple ways that God makes himself known is what sustains us day in and day out. You know, since it's football postseason time, I've been thinking if a team were to, to rely only on the big play to win every single game, then chances are they would lose most of their games. It's the simple things, not turning the ball over, establishing the run game so that you can throw down field. You know, all these simple things that, that help teams to win games. It's the same for us. Our life of faith can't be based on the big plays. We have to establish simple things throughout our lives so that we can recognize how the Lord comes to us in the midst of the regularity, in the midst of the mundane. Because this is where we spend most of our lives. This is the epiphany that we need constantly to know that God is there in the middle of the simplicity of life, waiting for us. Our job, like the job of the wise men, is to seek him and to worship him so that his glory, which is so often shrouded in simplicity, can become visible to the world. A light to the nations. That's what you and I are called to be. A light to the nations. Not shining our own light, but reflecting the light of Christ, who is already present and already making himself known.